It is May and under normal circumstances, certainly college graduates would be finishing up finals looking forward to graduation, but we are not living in normal times. And I wanted to talk to the president of Houston Tillotson University, Dr. Colette Pierce Burnett, about how the pandemic has impacted her campus. Dr. Burnett, I want to start with something I've heard you say before, and that is that your institution's biggest competitor is not other schools, it's poverty. Talk about that. I often do these speeches and I talk about my students, 70 plus percent of them are Pell eligible, 98% are um, receiving some form of, of aid. And we went through an exercise recently to look at students estimated family contributions. And it was such an eye opener to me where we saw that um, over half of our students are at an estimated family contribution, meaning what their families can actually afford to pay. Um, over half of them were at $10,000 or less, and a great number of them were at a zero estimated family contribution. So that is a barrier to your success. And what we take for granted that young people have in their homes, their lives, especially when we went to online, you know, sometimes we just generally think that everybody has internet access. Everybody has a good computer at home. Everybody has a safe environment to, to study and to work and to rest and reflect in. And that's not the case for individuals that are living in um, low income. So the university has really uh, be come to understand more so in this, the value of what we do. How have you provided safety nets for your students who, for example, might be food insecure or, or even homeless? Mm -hmm. So when we decided to close the halls, our students were going home for spring break anyway. And so we said that we were gonna be closing the residence halls until further notice because we just didn't know. And we immediately realized that many of our students um, didn't wanna go home. Um, permanently, permanently meaning for that term, but there was a cadre of students that were either in the foster care system, um, had aged out of the foster care system, were homeless or did not have a safe place to go home to. So we, we did accommodate those students. We worked, it, it was a lot that happened um, to work with students to, to parse through, you know, what students' needs were. So we accommodated those students that were in those categories that aged out of the foster care system, were homeless or did not have a safe space to return home to. And we did a, a, a myriad of things to be able to accommodate as many students as we can, could. And in, in we were in an emergency state at that point. Now we have since um, continued to identify students because sometimes students don't self-identify that they have a need um, for many reasons. So some of those things came to be as faculty would have interaction with students and we took everything online. Um, and we are, we're not an online school. So I've, I've, I have said this several times, we took a 145 year old institution fully online in two weeks. That was a heavy lift and we did it. How are you going to adapt, do you think, for the fall? And, and how will the systems you're putting in place now mm -hmm. impact the future at Houston Tillerson? Mm -hmm. Well, we are a stronger university as a result of this. And we will be even stronger when the pandemic is behind us as opposed to now we're going through it. We are offering all classes online this summer. Um, we are encouraging students. We, you have to keep students engaged and the population that I serve um, cannot take a gap year. They need to stay focused. They need to get and stay enrolled in college. That's been our message. You gotta fight through this. Irrespective of the, whether it's online, on ground, you gotta stay continuing to get towards the, your dream of becoming a college graduate. So we're fully online for the summer and we have not made a decision as of yet um, what we'll do in the fall. We wanna make as, as informed a decision as possible. The safety and health of our students and our faculty and our staff is paramount and our communities is paramount. Um, so whatever decision we make, I'll be able to say that it was with that in mind at the top of mind. There, this is such a complex thing because you want to minimize risks and the ultimate risk is a life. So we want to make sure that we're, that's not a risk that the institution will ever take. I did see you on Instagram last week, <laughs> one of your students. Talk about ways you're lifting them up and what are you doing in place of a graduation ceremony? Our graduation is like a celebration. People bring buses 
from Houston and Dallas to celebrate their graduate. And so it's a combination of things and it's more than just getting a degree. It's really a success moment. So the saddest moment for me was to have to postpone our graduation because these seniors have worked very hard to get to that moment. So we, don't, we did not cancel our graduation, we postponed it. We are gonna to have to create a new normal and that's what we want to do. People keep saying we wanna go back to normal. We don't wanna go back to normal. This is a true wake up call. So this generation who we call the genius generation here are, has an opportunity and a responsibility to create that new normal. They're, if you're a biologist, neurosurgeon, educator, historian, English major, whatever you're doing, you have an opportunity now to create that new normal. Well, we can't wait to see what the 2020 class of Houston Tillotson University does next. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for giving us a perspective on how your campus is handling this because I think it has been impacted in some profound ways. Mm -hmm. And we really appreciate this, this glimpse uh, during graduation time, Dr. Thank Burnett. you, Judy. Thank you for the opportunity.